Hello and welcome to the Detailing Business Channel. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. I think it's time we do a voiceover video and guide you through my process. I've had a ton of requests from my subscribers to talk about efficiency and saving time and making more money in the process. Keep in mind, this is real life detailing. I'm a mobile detailer and I've been in business for over 20 years. I go to my customer and I bring all the tools that I need with me. This is not the romanticized, sexy detailing video that's often portrayed on social media. Detailing is not romantic and it's not sexy. It's back-breaking, hot, and sweaty manual labor. Those videos serve a different purpose. They don't capture the real life of a working detailer. Real-world detailers don't have the luxury of the art of movie making and can't yell cut when something goes wrong. In the real world, stuff happens. Things break. Customers rush you to be finished by a certain time. You have a schedule to keep. You might have another job to get to after this one. You're trying to be efficient and make money. The sun is hot, or like in this video, it starts raining halfway through the job. You can't yell cut and finish tomorrow. The job has to be done and the customer has to be happy. So if you're expecting a slow motion, perfect cinematic drama to unfold in front of your eyes, this isn't the video or the channel for you. This is real world detailing. Real work, real stress, real sweat, and real money to be made. If that appeals to you, keep watching, leave a comment, and subscribe. With that being said, let's get on with the video. Okay, so this vehicle is a brand new Porsche Macan Turbo. It was purchased in California and driven to its home in Ohio. The customer hired me to return the vehicle to showroom condition, remove all the road grime, apply a ceramic coating, freshen up the interior and apply fabric protection to the carpets. The exterior is pretty grimy from all the road miles and it looks like it went through some fresh tar so I had to deal with that as well. So the first thing I typically do is start off with the interior. I'll start off with my sidekick blower and remove any loose debris and dust and get it down to the floor to be vacuumed up. If you have an air compressor, you can use that as well. After that, I always begin at the front driver's side and start vacuuming. I always start with the driver's side and move counterclockwise. It's monotonous to do the same thing every time, but that's how you become more efficient. A lot of subscribers ask why I start with vacuuming, and I'll go over that later in the video. Since this vehicle's brand new, there's no reason to get the extractor out to extract the carpets. I'm going to be applying a fabric protector, so I really don't want the carpets to be soaking wet. Instead, I'll just go over them with a damp towel. I have a bucket filled with towels and an ONR or Optimum No Rinse solution. These towels are primarily used for the exterior, but you can also use ONR on the interior as well. So I just grab a rag out of the ONR bucket wring it out and go over the carpets to freshen them up. Sounds crazy, but it works. Right now I'm applying a fabric protection on the carpets. I've tried every fabric protection on the market, even the commercial grade fabric protection. There just isn't a product that makes fabrics completely waterproof and stain resistant, or at least for very long. However, there is a product that every customer knows about. Everybody wants Scotchgard on their carpets and they ask for it by name, so that's what the customer gets from me. It works just as well as any other product on the market, which is not very good in my opinion. But I offer it as an add-on service anyway, and it makes me about 150 bucks when the customer requests it. 
Now I start working on the driver's seat, making sure to pull apart the seams since the dirt and crumbs like to hide in those areas. The driver must have long hair because there's quite a bit stuck in the holes of the leather. Now that my steamer's heated up and ready to go, I finish up working on the seams of the driver's seat. A lot of people get a kick out of how I use the steamer and the vacuum at the same time. The dirt has to go somewhere and I might as well vacuum it up at the same time. It does get some taking used to using both hands at the same time, but it's another example of becoming more efficient. Now I move on to the left rear passenger area. I use my steamer on the seat rails and between the rails and the console. No need to remove the seats. This is a brand new vehicle, and even if it wasn't brand new, I never remove the seats unless it's absolutely necessary. There's a huge liability and paperwork that comes with removing seats. If the customer's ever in an accident and something fails with the seat that you removed, you better have the documentation and dated torque specs handy when a lawsuit comes your way. Again, no need to extract here, just freshening up the carpet and preparing for the Scotch Guard. Now I move around to the trunk area. This area is probably the most dirty of the whole vehicle. And of course, no matter what kind of vehicle, the trunk area always contains the worst, cheapest carpet in the world. The trunk area always takes the most work and agitation because the cheap carpet holds on to everything.
From the trunk area, I continue on to the right rear passenger. I didn't get it on camera, so we skip to the front passenger. The reason I start with vacuuming is there's always the possibility that I'm going to need to use the extractor. I don't have the luxury of leaving the car in a heated garage overnight to dry, so I get to extracting as soon as possible to give it as much time for the interior to dry before I leave. Even if I don't need the extractor, I still follow the same steps to increase efficiency. Now that the vacuuming is finished, I start cleaning the hard surfaces and leather seats. I'm just using Meguiar's all-purpose cleaner here mixed about five to one. I never spray the all-purpose cleaner directly onto a surface unless it's really dirty and needs to have some dwell time. Instead, I open up my spray bottle and pour it directly into my rag. No fancy foaming bubble shots, just cleaning surfaces and not wasting time. From there, I determine which dressing I'm gonna be using. On modern vehicles, interior are typically matte finishes, so I wanna use something that's not greasy. In this situation, I followed up with Meguiar's Quick Interior Detailer. It leaves a nice matte finish and some UV protection as well. Now that the interior is pretty much done, it's time to start on the exterior. I always start with the wheels and tires. That's usually the dirtiest job of the exterior. So I get started there with Meguiar's wheel brightener at four to one. This is an acid-based wheel cleaner and it does a great job at breaking down the brake dust from these Porsche wheels. These wheels were caked with brake dust and I decided to let the wheel cleaner dwell a little bit and then rinse it off and repeat. I have quite a few wheel brushes and tools just for wheels, but in this case, the wheels were so new that the brake dust came right off with the wheel brightener and agitating with the microfiber towel. This is usually never the case. Next, I get started on the front of the vehicle. The vehicle was caked with bug guts from the 3,000 mile trip. Before I wash and rinse, I spray the front end with the all-purpose cleaner and let it dwell for a little bit. It does a great job of breaking down the bug guts and I use a bug sponge as well. Now I move on to washing the hood, windshield, and the roof. I'm saving the doors and the rear hatch for last. I have a special trick for those areas since they're so hammered with grit and tar splatters. Right here I'm trying out a new microfiber mitt that somebody sent me. It's a decent wash mitt, but it's just too heavy for me, so I switch over to my usual microfiber towels. Just out of the frame is my wash bucket. Like I mentioned earlier, the wash bucket's filled with fresh microfiber towels and O&R. When a towel gets dirty, I just grab a new one out of the wash bucket so I don't contaminate the wash water. 
I have a dedicated video about this that I'll link in the description. Now that those panels are washed, I go straight into claying the wash panels. I'm just using some quick detailer here to give it some lubricity since I rinsed the vehicle. My clay mitt is also in my wash bucket where it stays at all times. The clay mitt removes any contaminants on the paint and really makes the surface as smooth as glass. Now it's time to work on the dirtier parts of the vehicle. You can use an iron remover here, but I always go for the wheel brightener. Every vehicle gives off brake dust, and on the white vehicle, it shows up as little gold flakes embedded in the paint. The brake dust sticks to the paint, and then it rusts, which is what you see when you see those gold flakes in the paint. Wheel brightener does a great job of breaking down that brake dust. One would think that the wheel brightener would damage the paint, but if you think about it, what's the difference between factory painted wheels versus paint on the body of the car? Actually, there's no difference. Just be careful around glass because it can etch into the glass. So you don't want to leave it on there to dry. Also with wheel acid, you want to steer clear of any polished bare aluminum. Right here, I'm addressing the tar that's stuck on the paint. There's a ton of tar removers on the market, but I always go with Goof Off, which is a citrus-based solvent. It dissolves the tar quickly without harming the paint. It also does a great job of removing gum and carpet. On this side of the vehicle, I'm trying a different technique to try to save some time. I spray my wheel brightener followed by my all-purpose cleaner. This technique is often used in tunnel car washes. The pH different between the acid and the wheel brightener and the alkaline and the all-purpose cleaner really breaks down the grime quickly.
Since I didn't rinse the vehicle and the panels are still soapy and slippery, I go right into the claying. I could have rinsed off the vehicle and applied my quick detailer, but the outcome would have been the same and it would have just taken more time. It's really starting to rain here, so I pull the vehicle inside to finish the detail. While I have my pressure washer out and ready, I work on the rubber mats. I'm using my all-purpose cleaner and agitate with a soft brush and rinse. Now I'm drying the whole vehicle and getting ready for the polishing step. I have a stack of brand new towels that I use for this process. I may go through three or four towels in the process. Once the brand new towels get used, those towels are delegated to interior or wash towels. I used to have different colored towels for every occasion, special drying towels, green towels for the exterior, yellow for the interior, black for wheels, blue for glass. I pretty much simplified that process and the only towels that are special are my blue glass towels. When you're doing two or three vehicles a day at the end of the week, it's just easier to buy cheap Costco towels, throw away the really dirty ones and wash the salvageable towels. Keeping all the towels separated and washing them separately becomes tedious after a while. Just keep it simple. The exterior is in pretty good shape, so I settled on an unconventional combination of pad and product. In this case, it was the Meguiar's Correction Compound with a yellow Meguiar's polishing disc attached to my Griot's DA. Not only did the combination remove any light swirl marks, but it finished out shiny and with no marring or hazing. Now it's time for the final wipe down. I'm using Meguiar's surface prep to remove any oils and residue and prepare for the coating. Once that's done, and now that the tires are dry, I apply my tire dressing. In this case, it's Meguiar's All Season Dressing. I go back and forth on tire dressings, but All Season Dressing is the one I'm currently using, especially since hyper dressing is so hard to come by. Now it's time to apply the coating. The customer opted for the two-year coating, so here I'm using C Quartz SIC, which is probably the coating that I use the most. I always start off with the hood and the front quarter panels. I like to do the hood and the quarter panel, wipe it off, do the other side of the hood and the quarter panel, then work my way around the vehicle, making sure not to miss any spots.
the orange towel I'm using here is a CarPro suede towel and it does a great job of smoothing out the coating and spreading it out evenly. Then I do a final buff with a brand new microfiber towel. I'm using my scan grip headlamp so I can see any hazy spots that I might have missed. If you leave any of the coating, it'll leave a hazy spot and the only way to remove it is to compound it off. All finished and it's time for the next one. This vehicle turned out great and the customer was extremely happy with the results. So happy that they gave me a $300 tip on top of the $1,500 that I charged. The job from start to finish took about five hours, which leaves me enough time to get across town to the next job, which was a quick interior detail on a Porsche Panamera.